Needing good looking blur is a very common task. I was asked by a Boris Effect viewer how we could create bokeh using optics. And here's how we do it. Here we are with our first image, and we're going to look at the diffusion and blurs category down at the bottom. And we have quite a few different ways of doing blurs. Clean blur channels, depth of field, edge aware blurs, you know, lots and lots of different, different types of blurring. But there's one that I'm going to be especially interested in when we're trying to get that bokeh feel. And that is S Rack Defocus. And it's quite close to the end of our list. And like all of our effects, I like to just have a quick look at the presets just to see what they're doing. And already, we can see with a couple of these that we're getting that sort of trademark telltale uh, bokeh sign where we, we're getting these really nice circles of confusion. Uh, but let's go back to the default and actually break down what's happening here. So over on the right hand side in our parameters, we have the defocus width. And this may look like a, a sort of more traditional blur if you're just uh, working on this. But if I zoom in just a little bit, you can see that the blur we get is not that same sort of smoothness that we have with a Gaussian blur. We do have a shape starting to emerge. And that shape is being caused by the, the lens shape here. Currently it's set to a circle. But we can change this to a different sided shape. I'll go with six sides here. And we have other controls about how we start to shape our lens. But here's a secret to getting those nice looking bokeh shapes standing out a little bit. If we come a little bit further down now and just go to boost highlights, and I start to turn that up, you can see that that, that bokeh shape that we were, we were creating starts to move forward a little bit and become a little bit more visible. And we can change where the highlight threshold is, just underneath, and sort of try to work within that there. Just hit F to go back to, fit to screen. And now if I do the defocus width up and down, you can start to see that lovely shape just coming into the uh, to the highlights. Let's find a nice value for the boost highlights. And we'll take a look at our lens one more time. So here we have the bokeh parameter. So if I turn this up, we're starting to, to change our shape here. Let's uh, reset that to take that back down to zero. And let's bring that up just a little bit and we'll bring that up a lot. And you can see sort of like to start to, to fall off a little bit. And if I bring that into a negative area, we can get some quite interesting effects where we seem to sort of hollow out the inside of the light. And we sort of see this phenomenon with, with certain lenses in the real world as well, which is kind of interesting, I think. So let's take this just up a little bit just to shape it. And then we can find the width that we want. And we can even add things like a uh, chroma distort or color fringing to add even more sort of analog feel to our lens. So that's the basics of how we use it. Let's open up another image and see it working in practice. Taking a look at our second picture here, we can start to do a little bit more with Racti Focus. So if I turn on Racti Focus here, again, I'll Take a little look through the presets, see if something catches my eye. I think blurry eyes is pretty good. And let's crank this up a little bit more now. Again, I'll change the shape up. I like the effect we get when we have the six sided shape. And let's do the boost highlights thing as well. Excellent. Uh, now we can see a little bit of a problem that we've got. Uh, when we boost highlights, we can start to get like big patches of, uh, you know, bright areas because the, the brighter areas are going to start to, to clump together. We can try to fix this with the highlight threshold. But that might take out some of the, the ones that we're actually really interested in. I, I, you know, I really like what's going on with all of, of these around here. It's just this area here that's not as fun. So let's use the power of optics and its effect layers to dampen the brightness in just that area. Okay, I'm gonna come over to my layers and turn off the lightning here. I'm gonna 
add a new effect. And I'm just going to come into color and we'll use something like, uh, we'll just use a curves. And in my curves, I'm just going to bring the white output down there. Okay, so that's affecting the whole image, not quite what we want. The important thing to do is to cut out the model at the front. So that's going to be the trickiest bit. Uh, and I'm going to use an easy mask. So with easy mask selected, I'm going to draw around the background because that's the thing that I want to be affected by our curves. Let's just bring that in around about there. Don't have to be too accurate. And I'm going to right click and draw around the foreground, which is the thing we don't want to be affected by the curves. And that's going to be our model, of course. So let's bring that in and I can use the paint bucket up here and just right click with the paint bucket to flood fill in red and left click to flood fill in green. Now if I hit return and I'll hit M just to show the mask, we get a nice mask, which has kept in a lot of the, uh, the details that we need. If I wanted to get a little bit more accurate with this, then I can just sort of come in and, and add another couple of strokes around here and just reprocess. Okay, so let's take a little look. Let's turn off the mask now. And now that's only affecting the background. Let's drag this down. So let's have the curves happening first and then the rackety focus happening second. Let's turn that one on. And this is looking better. Now we can see that this truck isn't overpowering the entire image. Let's come back into, into our curves here. Let's see how we can isolate it just to the back of the truck here because it's also affecting the, the sign at the moment. I don't really like that. With all of our layers, we can have multiple masks on. So if I come to add another one in here into the path, and I'm just going to do four points just around my uh, sign here. Let's turn on the mask to see what, that, see what that's doing. And you can see that these are now adding together. Up at the top, we can choose how these are blending. So I can either cut that one out or intersect. So it's only the white parts that are white in both of those masks that are now going to show us, um, show us things in white, which is really what I want. Let's blur this out just a little bit, soften it out. And let's come in and take a little look now. So now we're dampening down just the truck, which is going to be great when we turn our rack defocus back on. So let's hit the edit on, on the curves and I can now adjust that white. So it's just a little bit more interesting for me. There we go. And it doesn't overpower there. But as you can see, we still have the rack defocus going over the entire image. Well, why don't we just recycle the mask that we created for the model with the curves? So I'm just going to drag that up from the curves into rack defocus. And now we have that one over the top. Let's go back to edit the rack defocus. And we can come in and make any sort of changes that we need. I'll turn the, the gamma off. I'll change the boost highlights a little bit as well and we get a bit more of a stylized look I kind of like that that's that's looking pretty nice uh, let's add one more layer over the top just to tie everything even more together uh, we'll come into our film lab uh, maybe I'll choose the color two strip find something I like here and maybe we'll use a blend mode soft light just to bring that back in that's looking a lot more stylized than our before picture did for our third picture we're going to be running optics in photoshop because sometimes if we just want to defocus the background we need to come in and break things up into an isolated version of the foreground and i've also got a copy of the background here and this background is slightly different because what i've done with this background is i've come in and control or command selected my mask that I created and I've just used content aware fill just to fill in that area here. So now we have a clean ish version of the background and a nice isolated version of the foreground. Notice here I've been very cavalier with the edges and I've made no effort to blend them in. And the reason for that is because we're going to be blending this out. So all of those little fine hairs are just going to disappear anyway.
and you're not going to notice when we place the original back over the top. Okie dokie. So I have the, the background only layer made into a smart object by right clicking and going convert to smart object. And I'm going to come into my filters and apply optics. I don't want to apply my previous filters or masks, but I do want to come into my diffusion and blurs and add in my rack defocus. I'll start with natural defocus again, taking down the boost highlights and resetting the brightness as well. So let's come over to the blur width, add a little bit of boost highlights just to bring in some of that and maybe change my shape up. I'll go with the eight sided shape, I think now. And I'm going to take the bokeh negative to give us that interesting hollowed out bokeh look that we get with certain vintage lenses. And maybe just defocus that even more. And because we don't want this over the entire image, let's come over to our masks. I'll add a gradient in. And I can interactively work with my linear gradient from top to bottom. So we can choose where that's going to be applied to. And that should be that should be all right. I'll take the defocus width down now and just find exactly how defocused I want it. Yeah, maybe around about there. When I'm happy, I can hit apply. And that will take us back into Photoshop. I can turn my foreground only back on. And in this way, I get my nice blurred out background while also preserving the foreground. And of course, these are only a few things that you can do with rack defocus. There's a lot we can work with if we start to add in blend modes into the mix or if you want to start experimenting more with the colors and the fringing, we can get some less natural looks for you. And I hope that's been helpful with how you can start to get that nice bokeh blurring with Boris Effects Optics. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and I'll see you again in another optics tutorial very soon. This tutorial was inspired by a user question. If you have any questions about optics or certain effects that you want to create, then just leave them in the comments below or send an email to live at borisfx.com to maybe see your question turned into an office hours live stream. Thanks for watching.